All right. Let me check with you guys. So what do you get for the meal or the integrating factor? <clears throat> this problem is already in the standard form. Okay, it's checked. That's why we get the Px as 2x and the Fx as uh, x to the third power. So integrating factor, Josie, would you like to share? I got e to the x. E to the x. Okay, so uh, how, thank you. Uh, how would you get that integrating factor? I should clarify. I guess I got um, uh -huh, uh -huh. e to the x squared. <laughs> e to the x squared. <laughs> so it's from e to the integral 2x dx. So e to the x squared as in mu. Okay. Everyone good with getting the mu or the integrating factor? Okay. And now we're going to find the solution. Use it to find the solution. So y equals 1 over mu integral mu times f of x <clears throat> with respect to x and then plus c. So the mu is one over e to the x squared, and then integral e to the x squared, the function fx is x to the third power with respect to x and then plus c. What do you think? Um, would you like to, 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 to do the rest of the problem, to share the rest of the problem, how you, how you do it, Josie? So I did it. Um, by parts with the tabular. Okay. The by parts with the tabular method, right? Okay, let's see. If you use by parts, what are the u and dv? Do you use fg version or the uv version? We're gonna use the bypass technique, but yeah, let's identify what, what which part that you're gonna find the derivative, which part you're gonna find the anti-derivative. Wouldn't dv be the uh, e? And then u be the x cubed? Okay. All right, so that, uh, let me, I'm gonna put on the side here, okay? U is x to the third, and then the dv is e to the x to the second. Okay, for the u, no problem. We can find the end, uh, derivative all the way to zero. But how about dv? What is the antiderivative of e to the x to the second? So it's one half e to the x squared. One half e to the x squared. I'm gonna put question mark here. Thank you, David. How about try do backwards? What is the derivative of one half e to the x squared? Would you get back to the same term? Wouldn't it be one over two x e to the x squared? It's supposed to be one. Um, it's supposed to be a, an extra term. Um, one over two x e to the x squared. It's it's semi correct, but it's not quite. Um, basically, uh, if you look at this, yes, we can use by parts, but we cannot do it right away. We have to adjust it a little bit, okay? Because this term is the problem that we cannot find the antiderivative. There are some missing terms in there, okay? So um, you guys get an idea how to use, uh, to use the by part, but let's let's see over here. This is an kind of another another level of by part technique that we can apply. The key is over here the x square. Yes, if u is x to the second for now, it's I would say it's a combination of the u sub technique and the by part techniques in one problem. And you will see how it works out. So if u is x squared, so we're gonna have e to the u. How about x to the third? x to the third means x squared times x. Okay. Since u is x squared, so this is the u 
and an XBX. As we let u be x squared, so the du is 2x dx. That means one half du is x dx. So we're going to use the u sub technique first. Now the integral becomes the integral of one half e to the u times u du. See kind of the layer of the technique of integration that you have to apply. Questions before I move on. Yeah, this is something that you have to be careful. <clears throat> Now, <clears throat> after we are done the, the, the U substitution part, we're going to use the bipart technique. Okay, so I'm going to write it as one half integral e to the u times u du. And then back to what Noah and Josie said, you guys going to use the tabular biparts. Is that right? Did I say it right the way that you were going to use? Do, do you recall the tabular biparts? The biparts, um, the specific, case, the special case of the biparts that when the u is, or the the term that you can find the derivative is a polynomial form, you can use a tabular biparts. So the left column, the one that you are going to find the derivative, the right column, you are going to find the antiderivative, and we delete it to identify which one you're gonna find the derivative, which one you're gonna find the, the antiderivative, e as the exponential, the u is the algebraic. So the earlier one is the one that you're gonna find the derivative. And the later part, the later factor, you're gonna use it to find the antiderivative. So you're gonna find the derivative all the way to zero. Since it's polynomial, that tells you one, two, three, three rows that you're going to have to complete. The right hand side, you find the antiderivative, antiderivative. Multiply from the upper left to the low, the second row on the right, plus side for that product, minus side for that product. Okay. Therefore, the y, well, for this integral, let's, let's complete this one first. <clears throat> So this is going to be one half quantity e to the power u times u. So u e to the u and then minus e to the u. And then recall the u is x squared. We're going to bring it back to the solution. So y equals one over e to the x squared bracket. The integral now give us one half, oops, one half, oops, what happened here? One half, the u is <clears throat> x squared, the e to the u, e to the x squared, minus e to the u or e to the x squared, and then plus c. Okay, we bring it back in here. And next, we're going to multiply all by e to the x squared. So we have 1 over 2, x squared, and then minus e to the x squared over 1 over e to the x squared reduced to be one and then the last term c over e to the x squared. So this is your general solution. Okay, questions? You guys good? Yep, good. Now if we look at the transient term, as you see the limit of one half x squared as x approaches infinity, it's not going to be zero. We know it's approaching infinity. Limit of negative one as x approaches infinity, not zero. Limit c over e to the x to the second as x approaches infinity, this one definitely going to zero because the denominator grows exponentially plus the power like square. The top, the numerator is the constant, so it's fixed number. The limit of this term goes to zero. Therefore, the transient term. Is 
c over e to the x square what does it tell you that means in the long term or when you look at the asymptotic graph of this solution it will be this function or the parabola so that means if you have the solution curve for example i just let sketch it so you have the asymptote and then the graph could be something like wherever it goes and then eventually eventually it will be approaching to the curve the parabola curve okay like when you did the the asymptote graph in pre-calc you draw the the asymptote here and the graph approaching on the left side on the right side something like that okay or the curve something like that okay that's the idea of uh, the use of the transient term uh, the transient term will go away eventually so then the remaining terms will be the asymptotic curve for the solution all right are we good for this problem it doesn't look too bad right so it looks like two x y and then the right hand side just x to the third they're all a polynomial term but when you started the problem now it's not as easy as it looks so it requires some more thinking you know to to get the antiderivative out